classified professional development breakfast and uh, the class classified professional development days. And I'd first like to introduce you to Sheila Rose. Good morning. So I'm Sheila Rose, I'm in the Languages Division, and I have been working with a group called the Academy of Professional Learning, trying to create um, professional learning opportunities for faculty, classified, and managers here on campus. And so we have had the wonderful experience of coordinating with your classified Senate officers to bring this event. It's really been a pleasure to work together, so thank you. And um, we just had a couple of uh, announcements to make. First, we are working on creating a website so that you will have access to the opportunities that are coming. So if you can see behind me, it's still under construction. But um, if you want to check regularly, we'll send out an email once it's completely developed. And we'll also have a calendar where you can look and find all of the different professional learning opportunities for classified staff here on campus. Um, I did want to announce a couple of room changes. So Monica Sousa from the um, 4CS was not able to make it today, so those sessions will not be happening. But in order to have another opportunity for you, there will be a smart classroom training uh, this morning from 9.15 to 10.45 in R304. So if you haven't already, please sign up at the table. So with no further ado, Carol Robinson is going to introduce our guest speaker. Hi, our guest speaker today is John Kuglin, and I took some things off the internet because uh, they show you um, how lucky we are to have him here today. Um, he was a featured in CNN for his innovative uses of technology in the classroom, testified at the U.S. Senate on classroom technologies, advocates, um, he's a top 25 educational technology advocate in the United States, and um, I met John in Spokane in 1997 at a conference, and a few years later, he came to the University of Montana where I was uh, working and studying. And at one point, we started at the very low threshold of making web pages, and eventually, he brought in a, a NASA grant and gave me a logo for the University of Montana online and uh, $500,000 and said, let's, let's make the first uni university online program. So we did that in 1999. So I appreciate John for all the um, encouragement he gave me. And I hope you enjoy his presentation today. If you have smart devices, a phone, iPad, um, bring them out because you're gonna be using them and interacting with John. So here he is, John Kuglin from Colorado. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. And it was uh, great to be able to work with Carol at the University of Montana and do some wonderful things there. And as it's, it's wonderful to be here today to be able to talk to you, I always enjoy uh, coming to California. I know that wherever we live, sometimes we think things aren't going as well as we'd like them to. But I can tell you, California is a fabulous state. As you know, it's the sixth largest economy in the, in, in the world. And it sets the stage for many, many things that we do in the country, across the country. You guys have led the way for years through the ups and downs. And hopefully California is going to continue to lead through the situation that we're in, uh, we find ourselves in today, because uh, it's very, very interesting. But I'm, I'm so uh, uh, grateful to be here. And, and I'd like to talk to you about a couple of things. And just a couple of things on the front end. I start all my presentations with a, a little walk down memory lane. Does, does anybody remember what one of these things are? Yeah, the old floppy disk. You know, I, I forget where I was at not too long ago, and there was a young tech t coming up helping me, and I said, say, uh, can you go out and find a five and a quarter inch drive? I, I need to get some data off of this thing. And uh, he said, I'm sorry, sir. I've only seen one of those in a museum. So I wasn't sure whether he was talking about the disk or me. You know? But then, you know, this being called a floppy, then this thing came along, which was also called a floppy disk. And it really started to confuse people as far as technology is concerned. But you know, one of the things we always need to keep in mind is that it all boils down to really one of these things. You know, really zeros and ones. And how you put zeros and ones together is how it all comes together. And so that's what we're going to be talking about, how zeros and ones uh, can help you uh, with the work and so forth that you're uh, going to be doing. So I put together a presentation uh, that I call right here, uh, new technologies to organize 
and simplify your work demands. Now, being classified staff, I know that you have lots of responsibility. In fact, in many, from many perspectives, including mine, it's the classified staff people that keep the campus working and moving and, and going forward. With all of the jobs that you do on, on campus without you, the campus would come to a grinding halt. So I wanted to try to come and share with you and, and show some things. So I'm going to be starting with about 10 minutes on the front end doing some big picture things. Then I'm going to spend some time uh, sharing some technologies I think that might impact the way that you work. Because part of what you want to, uh, to gain today from me and, and the other sessions that you attend is increasing your efficiency and your effectiveness. That's what we really need to do. We need to work smarter and not harder as these demands continue to increase on us. So I hope I'm going to share some things with you that will allow you to do that. And then at the end, well, let me just cut to the chase. In my hand, I have three money, cash. I'm going to put this here, three $10 bills, OK? Now, you've got to admit, that's the first speaker that I think has ever brought his wallet out within the first two minutes, <laughs> put money out on the table. But we're going to have some fun with that at the end. And we're going to have a little contest where one, two, or maybe three of you will leave with one of these $10 bills. And you know the good thing? You don't even have to listen to win, OK? <laughs> this is fabulous. He's bringing out money, and I don't need to listen. You know, Carol, where did you get this speaker from? <laughs> Anyhow, we're going to have some fun here, but we're going to be some serious, we'll be serious as we move through this. So I want to start the presentation with really this, this little one here is looking at the wall. And, and really, I'm going to start with this sound, because this sound is kind of where we trace really many, many things that are happening today with technologies and a lot of different things. It comes back to this. Now, kind of watch your ears because this sound is a little bit piercing. Here you go. Hear that? Anybody know what the heck that is? Sputnik. That's the sound of Sputnik coming back when the Soviet Union launched the first satellite, not the United States. OK? They launched the first satellite, and that set off shock waves across the world, in particular this country. And so it was at that particular point in time where we started to move forward and we started to say, hey, we can do some of these things. We have to do some of these things. So what I'd like to talk about is that was the first satellite. So that little boy looking at that or heard that sound, he became inspired. And one of the things that I want to do today is to try to inspire you to think differently. In fact, many people were inspired by that sound. And what that sound did was it launched satellites now, such as this one right here, uh, which is actually taking pictures. Now, if you're familiar with Google Earth that I'm going to share with you just in a minute, uh, we have many, many satellites overhead taking pictures and companies associated with that. So many of the graduates from your institution here, and, and believe me, you're, you're all part of, those, of that graduating class with all of the responsibilities that you have, are going to be looking for jobs that, that come in this, uh, maybe in this sector. So, Let's see, just out of curiosity, that was the first sound that I gave you. Now, let's just do this just for a second. Let's come out here. This is Google Earth. And uh, this is my home over in Denver. And let's fly over here to the campus of uh, Pasadena City College. Let's come over here right now. And uh, we're going to come right down to campus. So there we are. I think I got the stick pin in the right place, right out front. See, I just flew over. It took me a lot longer last night to do that, you know. But nonetheless, I took the same path. And we're right out front. And what, what I'd like to do now is just to kind of give you an indication of, of what's happening, just to show you, just in, to inspire. People were inspired to do things. Watch now as I start to pull back from Pasadena. And I start getting overhead here. And now, right down in the corner, you probably can't read that, but we're about 8,000 feet over, over the building right now. So as I continue to pull up, there's the 210. And you'll start to see things that you probably recognize. And you come back up here. Now I'm about 15 miles overhead. As I continue to pull back, we start to see the greater Los Angeles basin and so forth. We start to see the coastline. And that gives about 60 miles. But let's kind of go up to about 139 miles. Let's go on up to 322 miles, and pretty soon, let's come up here, and what do we start to see? I see satellites. Do you see them pop in? See them right here? 
That's live data being fed into this data system. There's satellites overhead right now over Pasadena as we move, and they will move too, and you'll start to see that there are different satellites up here right now from different countries. Uh, in fact, we normally see a lot of, here's a Russian satellite, here's a Chinese satellite, and they sit up there and they float overhead. Now, just exactly from that first sound of Sputnik, what's going on over our head right now? Let's pull back just a little bit further, and you start to see how many satellites are in over our head right now, and then we can start putting them and start flying them around the Earth, and we start to see what's going on overhead. So if you think you're walking on a night and you're all by yourself, <laughs> smile and wave, okay? So I wanted to share that piece with you uh, when we talk about inspiring. Now, inspiration comes in many forms. And so what I wanted to do is share this with you, because unfortunately, today, today is NASA's 50th birthday. And today, the workers of NASA were told to stay home, literally all of them, okay? They are non-essential. So uh, that's not any kind of statement, that's just the way that it is. So what I'm sharing with you is now, where is it going? Where is innovation going? Where are people being inspired? Maybe you saw this, which is the next generation space shuttle, as the space shuttle was retired. This is the next, but it's not de designed and developed by NASA. It's designed and developed by Richard Branson from Virgin Atlantic. And maybe you've been following this. And maybe you, maybe you saw this piece on the news here recently, okay? Where this is going up. And this is now the new frontier. This is what you're seeing is commercial space flight for its first time. And you're gonna see that take off with people buying tickets in it. Now watch what happens to the flame, by the way, as it leaves the atmosphere. As it leaves the atmosphere, you'll see the orange shut off just like that. And then it enters into the vacuum of space. See what happened right there? The engine didn't stop. It just ran out of the atmosphere oxygen on the outside. And there, it takes off down low. This is a replay of it taking off from a different angle. But what we're doing is we're witnessing innovation. It started with that Sputnik, and it continues to this day, where you're now seeing the first wagon trains, if you will, of space going out and coming in. So I wanted to share with you a couple of things, some big picture items from the outside. I'd like to just also share with you that it is not just in space and so forth, and it is not just in education, nor is it even more specifically in classified personnel world. Everybody is changing. Now, you might recognize the guy that I got up on the screen here, Brian Williams. If you watch NBC Nightly News, you'll know that's Brian. What I'm going to ask Brian to do is to tell you a story that is not in education or higher ed or in, even in space. It's in medicine and how medicine is beginning to change. So what I'd like you to do is to listen as Brian introduces Dr. Nancy Snyderman, who's going to interview a cardiologist, and I want you to see how the cardiologist is using his phone, because later in my presentation, we're gonna start using our phones, okay? But I want you to see how he uses his phone in medicine in this particular case. So here's Brian, watch what they do. In our next story here tonight, we're about to hear one of the world's top physicians say the smartphone may change his profession and personal medical care in ways none of us saw coming. His story tonight from Dr. Nancy Snyderman. Why do we have people being treated like cattle herd? That's waste. And the billions of dollars that's being wasted each year for screening and the wrong drugs and the wrong everything. It's astounding. And we just can't go on like this. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Dr. Eric Topol has long been one of the world's foremost cardiologists. Hey, great to see you. He has now become the foremost expert in the exploding field of wireless medicine. And this explosion, he says, is about to make our health care better and cheaper. Watch what he does with his cell phone. And we'll just pop this iPhone into it like that. He shows how simply his modified iPhone produces a cardiogram for a patient. So you got you just put your fingers on that. There you go. And in a second, wow. you know, in the first second, then it stabilizes. There it is. 
The device was approved by the FDA in December and is now sold to physicians for $199. Topol tells his patient he just saved a $100 technician's fee. So are we close to using this to say, I'm going to, di I'm going to diagnose you and prescribe four or five apps instead of four or five medications? Well, these days I'm actually prescribing a lot more apps than I am medications. You can take the phone and make it uh, a lab on a chip. You can do blood tests, saliva tests, urine tests, all kinds of things, a sweat tests through your phone. Okay, okay. The guy had me until he said urine test. <laughs> now, somebody might lend me their phone. I've got to do a urine test here afterwards. <laughs> But seriously, he is serious, and that is absolutely true. You see what he's talking about. So I want classified staff to start working and become I-classified, in, in other words. How do you start taking the workload that you have and the position that you have and start using some of these same devices, okay? So we start putting it together. Now, just to show you that it's not just what the doctor was doing, I'm just going to hold up. I just have the uh, Samsung uh, Galaxy 3 phone just to show you what, what he's talking about. And I'll start my phone up just for a second here. And uh, what I'm going to come across here is, is uh, to come over here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead now. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put my finger over the lens on a free app that I have. And then what it's doing is it's going to take my pulse on, on the front of the phone here right now, just doing this. And this is just a free app that I go out and get. So I can start taking my pulse whenever I want to just using my iPhone and putting my finger there as it's reading. So uh, it is amazing. And by the way, I'm going to show you where I have this presentation online in just, a, in just a little bit so that everything I'm sharing and showing with you today, you'll be able to leave, those of you that are interested, you'll be able to leave and get to it. Okay. And if you come down to the bottom down here, you'll go ahead and click on this particular uh, piece down below here. And what you'll do is you'll come out here and it's called Instant Heart Rate. This is where you go and get the free app if you're interested in putting that on your phone. Okay, so you can start, you can put that in there. They also have one for reading stress. So I know there's no stress on campus. So you may, you may or may not want to install that one on your phone. You don't want to break your phone. <laughs> so anyway, that's where it's at. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll show you where to go and get all of this uh, uh, as, we move, as we move forward. So again, uh, we are living and working in a hyper-connected world. Now, I could ask all of you uh, to hold up your devices so you could look around the room, <clears throat> and you would see something very similar. This is an audience I had in uh, Orlando, Florida, not too long ago. And I asked them to hold up their devices. Look at how connected we are. Gone are the days which we are not connected, whether or not the institution is buying the device or whether or not you have that device that you're packing around, uh, packing around in your pocket. We are connected, and we need to work uh, as such. Let's take advantage of that and as we move forward. Now, one word of caution as we move into today. I'd like to put up this OODA loop. This OODA loop actually came to us by way of the military, and it was a thought process, a decision-making process, for what you do as you move forward. Now, we've all been into situations where people have made decisions without thinking them through. And we see that literally all the time. But if you apply this little matrix right here to your thought process in terms of what it is that you want to do in the future, I think you're going to, it's going to serve you well. And you start at the 12 o'clock position. Everybody in here today can observe. That's what you're here for. You came in this morning, had a nice breakfast, and you want, you, you're here because you want to better yourself. You want to increase what I call your efficiency and your effectiveness as a classified employee. You want to do that. So everybody can observe. Takes no skill at all, just observe. As you observe today, you can go to the three, uh, three o'clock position where you start to orient yourself. As John starts showing you things, you start thinking to yourself, hmm, this looks interesting to me. This might be something I could do in work. So you start orienting yourself to what it is that I'm sharing and showing. Then you move to the six o'clock position. You make a decision. I'm going to decide because I think this is really going to work for me. And you see how you start to come around the clock? And then you act. You do not come in and act by trying to do everything right away, or really never have to do everything ever. You're just trying to gain one or two things today that maybe you can put into, uh, into your practice by 
when you return to work next. So that's called the OODA loop. It's a strategy. Just kind of keep that in mind, if you would, uh, as we move forward. Okay. Now, the thing is that a lot of people, you talk to a lot of people. I know you do this in your job. Have you ever run into a situation? You've talked to somebody, and you get that look like they're not listening? <laughs> or worse yet, they're not understanding? I know that I told that to you before. And you got that kind of deer in the headlights look. And it's a real problem when that happens. And so you might want to use this video with them maybe to make a, make a statement. This comes from a funny place. This comes from the German Coast Guard. And this is what happens when you think that you are listening uh, and understanding someone, but you're really not, even though you're speaking in the same language. You're just not understanding or you're getting your point across. This is a good little video I like to share. Here you go. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächter. Das Gerät und das Gerät. Überlebensradar. A little dark, but you can see. He's taking over. Young guy taking over. Here you go. Mayday, mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you... Okay, uh, over. We are sinking. We are sinking. Hello? This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? <laughs> Have you ever run into that in your work? That's how people listen. OK? So if there's a place you want to use that, by golly, use that. Yes, very interesting. We get, uh, it, it really drives a point home about listening. Now, I want to drive a point home to you. You're here today. I keep throwing out these words, efficiency and effectiveness. I want you to put yourself into this short little video that I have. And the video is actually, it shows stairs on the left. You see the stairs on the left, and you see uh, the people coming, uh, and they're using, what do you think? the escalator, if you got them side by side. Now, the reason I want you to put in, uh, your, you into this picture is I want you to think about the escalator as being your everyday work. This is what you do every day. You come to work and you just do this, OK? And people come in, they expect these things from you. But what I'm going to challenge you to do is to think differently about the way you're working. And I want you to change some things. In other words, we all know it's healthier to go up the steps, OK? So if you make some changes to the steps, i.e., you make some changes to the way that you're working, all right, uh, can we expect some results? Can we, can we expect some things if we make some changes? So keep that in mind as you watch this little piece right here, where they make some changes to the steps. And watch what the people do, because right now, over 90% of the people are coming in. I do, I do a lot of airports. You know that there are people who stand on the walking escalator? You see the walking ones that are flat? They stand on those as opposed to walk, not going up an incline. So we need to change that. Watch if we should put this to, into practice. Here we go. So we've got to make some changes to our working methodology. So everybody's coming to work. It's going up the escalators like they always do. So. We want to make some changes in our work. So they're going to change the steps this way. And I'm going to show you some changes to the way that you work. So, interesting. OK, that's interesting. Ah, let's see if it makes a difference. Hmm. Simple solution to a complex problem. Let's see what we get. Oh, there's something different in this office. Something is happening in this department differently. Yeah. Look. Staff's coming in there even playing in the office for a while. They've never, people I've never even seen are showing up saying they work here. OK? Dogs are getting into the act. So yes, you start to see how, how when we start changing our practice, our efficiency and our effectiveness, using the steps as a metaphor. Because I'll, I'll tell you the truth, here's what happens if we don't. If we just continue to do the same things that we do over and over and over again, then we get locked into this kind of thinking. Okay? We get locked into this kind of thinking. This is why we, I believe, why we need to change. Because we certainly don't want to end up like, well, like these two, okay? And we don't want our graduates to end up like these two. 
These are still, they're so used to riding the escalator every day, this is what happens to them. Whoa, that's not good. I don't need this. I'm already late. Somebody will come. Anybody out there? Do you have a phone? No. Sorry. Somebody! Hello? There are two people stuck on an escalator and we need help. Now, would somebody please do something? Help! Help! We're going to leave them stranded, okay? And I know some of you are probably identifying with people you know like, that are like that. But we won't go there, okay? And uh, so, yes, yeah, so again, trying to make the point to you on the front end of my presentation about how important it is to start taking a look at different pieces that we have. Now, I'm going to now move you into showing how you can change your stair steps through showing you some of the technologies that might allow you to work differently. And so that we can start maybe instead of riding that escalator every day, we start putting some systems in the place that might change the way uh, that people uh, interact with you and that you are able to interact with them and therefore increase those pieces. So let me share with you uh, where to go when you are finished with this presentation uh, and you want to get some of the resources that I'm talking about. You will go out to kuglin.com. So if you, have a, uh, uh, if you have a tablet right now or even a phone, you, you don't have to go out right now. I'm, I'm just going to share this with you. We're going to use those devices in just a minute for, for something else. But you go to kuglin.com. And over, this is my website. And these are the main titles across the top. And if you come over and you pick on uh, web tiles, these are web tiles. And the very first one is called main presentation. And if you click on main presentation under web tiles, you're going to get this little box right here that's just chuck full of web resources. Those are called web tiles. And uh, given time, I might show you how I put something like that together, because uh, you're going to want to organize your work so that other people can get to it and organize resources. And this is a very, very nice way of being able to organize yourself so that other people who are now becoming more and more used to seeing those icons, don't you agree? They get the new iPhones. They got, they got uh, their, their Galaxies running uh, the Android system. Everybody's got these tiles. Heck, even the new Microsoft Office, uh, is, or the Microsoft uh, operating system, uh, it's got tile, it's tile-oriented. Tile so it's kind of the way everything is going. But when you click on the very first set of tiles here, main tiles, you're going to see that there's a tile on here called the Pasadena City College. And when you click on that tile, you're going to pull up the resources that I'm showing you today, OK? Including right here, there's just a link back to kuglin.com, but right next to it, is the presentation that I've just been delivering to you is all online for you. So you can go back in and play those movies if you want. You can go back in and look at everything that I'm sharing with you and showing. So part of what I do is I stand and deliver like I'm doing now, but I also like to involve you and engage you through the internet and give you resources online. Okay? So I want you to see kind of where I'm at. So that resource is available to you right there. All right? So again, just so that you know where you're going, you come back over here, you log into kuglin.com, you get my main website, you come up under web tiles, and you go main presentation tiles. This pops up right here, and you click on the little blue box. Now, that little blue box will be there, and then after a week or two, I do move it down to number four. So you might want to look for it under number four if you don't see it under number one. As I go to other places, I tend to put them on the first page, but then you'll be on number four. It will be archived there. And then when you click on that button, it'll take you out to this, this right here where the rest of the resources I have are, are available to you. OK, let's continue to push forward with what I'm uh, sharing with you. Now, let's, let's do our first service. Let's make our first change in the way that we're going to work. And you're going to see how important this piece is. This piece is very, very important for you. How many of you have to communicate with other people? <laughs> Hello. How many of you have to uh, let other people know that something else is going on and they need, or that you need a response back from them? And how long does that take sometimes? Weeks? Months? Never. How about this? What would you say if I told you, would you agree with me 
that sometimes email takes two to three days on average to answer when a text message is generally looked at and viewed within an hour? Because that's what resource, uh, re, uh, research tells us. People check their text messages, but they don't check their email. So why don't we meet them on the grounds in which they understand? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, I'm going to show you how to set up a text messaging service to the people that you work with so that you can send them information at will. You follow me? So we're going to do this. And then I'm going to go ahead and use that service to communicate with you on other things that I build in our workshop. And I'm going to send them to you for you to participate in. Do this way. So watch what I do. Now, if you just kind of stay with me step by step, I'll show you what I do. I'm going to use a service called Remind 101. So right now, you can just kind of watch what I do. I'm going to come out and I'm going to launch this service called Remind 101. It's free. And so when you go out to Remind 101, I'm going to go ahead and sign in because I've created a free account. So when, if you like this service, remember, you're kind of watching what I'm doing. And you're just orienting yourself, right? You're observing and you're orienting. Remember the wheel I showed you? So I'm going to come over here. And I, I uh, went to Remind 101, set up a free account. I'm going to come over here now, and I'm going to add a class. And I'm going to do this. This is the teacher. This is you working prior. I'm going to come over and add a class. And what I'm going to do is the class name I'm going to call this is uh, Pasadena. And the class code is Pasadena. Now, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make sure you get a green check mark in there because that means that nobody else has ever used the word Pasadena. So you have to be unique in that word. You, you follow me? Because you can only have one group called Pasadena. So I just set up Pasadena, and that's all I did. I've got a free count. I'm doing it right in front of you. Everybody OK so far? I click Add. And uh, sorry, this code is already taken. See, so somebody's already got it. So what I like to do then is I'll do Pasadena 2. And there, so I like to use numbers. So Pasadena was already taken somewhere, OK? So what I did is I just used the number Pasadena 2. All right, now, what I'm going to do is ask you now to take out your smartphone, OK, your smartphone. If you've got a smartphone, and understand that as you update your phones and so forth, smartphones are about the only phones you can buy really anymore, OK? Everything is smart, uh, uh, cell phones. I've gone by the way of the cassette and the 8-track and so forth. Uh, they're still out there, though, and they're still functional, and they're still good. But, but you, can still, you can still send a text from your phone. Now, it doesn't have to be a smartphone here. You can still send a text from a phone. So if you don't have one, if you want to just kind of watch and listen to what I'm going to do, get the concept, all right? Because this is, this is important for you. What you're going to do is you're going to type in this phone number, 904-429-4657. That's the number you're going to text to, and you're going to send a text message to. In the message, you're going to send a text message at Pasadena 2. So you're going to send a text message. The body of the text is Pasadena, right here, at Pasadena 2. It's right on the screen. And the phone number that you're going to send it to is 904-429-4657. So if you're not able to do that, just sit tight with me, because you'll be able to watch what happens. I think it's more important for you to see what happens. Those of you that have and are able to do that, please send me a text message, all right? And send it to this number. Now, when you sign up for this account, you will get your own unique phone number. Now, here's the nice thing. Will people be able to text you back? No. You don't want to hear from any of those people. <laughs> you hear from them enough. They will get one-way text message. If they try to respond back to you through that text message, they'll only get a message that says, I'm sorry, this is only one way. You cannot text back. If they try it, to do it again, it says, the IRS has been notified. You will be audited on your last three years' tax. No. Seriously, though, you can, it's one way. It's a one-way service. You send them information, reminders, and so forth, but they cannot come back this way which is very, very important, OK? So what we've done is we've set up a text messaging service right here. And now what you do is you tell everybody that you're working with in your department or whatever, however you're divided up, 
you're getting everybody now to sign up for this service. You are giving them, there's a sheet that you can print off. Right there, there's a sheet that has instructions on it. You give everybody in your department, everybody that you have to communicate with, you give them that sheet and you say, sign up for my text messaging service. They sign up, you don't sign them up. They sign up. They can opt in and they can opt out. And now what you have is a direct line to their cell phone to send them information to their, to their phone. You follow me? Now, to do that, let me just show you. Once you're done and once you're signed up, then I can come over here and uh, I can see down the side over here that I'm getting people signing up over here. See the subscriber list that I have? I can see everybody in my department there that has signed up for my text messaging service. Now you may not get a lot at first because you know how people are, they go, well, yeah. But then the first time they miss something and you say to them, do you have my text messaging service? That's your fault that you didn't get it, not mine. See, I'm setting it up for you. Now if you don't get it, it's because you didn't do something. So sign up for my service and I will be sending you things. It's how I begin to work. It's how I'm changing the steps. It's how I'm increasing my efficiency and my effectiveness by opening up these new lines of communications. So are we okay with that piece? Setting up a text messaging service. And now if I wanted to send you a message, here's all I do. I can come over here and uh, I have Pasadena selected as my class, I come over here and say hello and welcome to my new service. And you know what? Send. I just now sent that to everybody who signed up. I just sent that. And in a minute you're going to see how I'm going to send them URLs, web addresses, to things that I'm going to be building that I want them to go see. And so this is the way I'm going to send it out to them. So far, so good? Now, they sign up. If they don't, they missed out. Now, here's a good thing. You can do this. You can type in a number of messages that you want, and you can come down here and pick the day and the time in which they go out. So that you know if there's a meeting that's scheduled, you can send everybody that you want a reminder one day prior to, 12 hours prior to, hey, there's a meeting today at, at 2 o'clock. Hope to see you there. They pick up their phone because they got a text message. You know, they're going to read it within an hour. Oh, that's right, the meeting is today. See, and they get it. You got a direct line into their pocket. Now if we can just figure out how to you get into their pocket book. No, well, not really. Okay. So are we okay with the concept? Messaging, you can set up. This is great. My wife actually teaches accounting at Metro State University. I had her sign up for this. And she actually messages her students as to when homework's due, when tests are coming. And she got it in the front end. She just spent one hour back at the beginning of the semester, typed in all the reminders that she wanted to do, and dated them and time stamped them. And then they just start to be delivered uh, as when you date, uh, date and time stamp them. So you can get them out. OK. Everybody all right? We'll move on. That's the first one that I wanted to show. It's called Remind 101. Now, when you're back on that page that I shared with you, I put Remind 101 right here. So all you have to do is click right there if you want to go, and you go out, and you can sign up and do what you want to do. So you, it's online there for you, or you can write Remind 101 down. All right. Now, let's come back here, and uh, I'm going to do this, and I want to share another one with you. Now, you're responsible, I know that many of you are responsible to send out information for upcoming events. It might be to, something that's in the department or something that's going on. And what I'd like to do is to show you how to set up something very simple and then how to deliver it. So set something up and then deliver it. So watch kind of what I do here. Now, everything I show you is free. So I'm trying to touch on concepts that allow you to communicate better and to inform better. So what I'm going to share with you now is a service that is called some more. So let me just bring some more up with you. And, and then I'll, I'll, I'm going to stitch the two together here for you. 
So as we come up here, and uh, this is called, these are called creating flyers or distributing information. When I work with instructional staff, these are actually called content modules that can be delivered. But I want to, I, want, I would like to have you guys kind of visualize the idea and see if you could use something like this. And, and let me just share with you what I'm talking about. When you come over here, you can start putting these flyers together uh, very, very simply. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to construct a flyer right in front of you right here. So I'm going to say start a flyer. And, and what you're going to do is you'll, you'll get a, a, a template that's going to pop up here. And what is this? Is there an event coming up that I have to have everybody know? Uh, is there a bulletin I want to have or something along those lines? Or do I even want to start from a blank? So let's say start from a blank. And now what I'm going to do is I can start picking the title right here and say staff meeting. And uh, now see what I'm going to start doing is I, I'm, I'm going to start doing things here. I'm going to start embedding different kinds of things. I'm going to take these things out. These are tools now that you can start dragging into your flyer. <clears throat> so you come down below here and you say, hmm, I want to have uh, uh, a picture uh, in my flyer. So I just drag that picture. I just click on, on picture right here and I put that in here. And do I want a big photo or do I want a photo gallery? Well, it, it depends upon what kind of a flyer you're building and for the event that you're building. And so let's just do a big photo right now a big photo. So there it is. I got a big photo template in. If I click on this, then I can come out here and I can, I can go ahead and look at some of the things that I have here. Uh, maybe I want right here, nice picture of bear grass. See, that's, that's loaded into my, into my flyer. So there's nice photograph of bear grass. That's in Glacier National Park, Montana, by the way. If I want to put text below that, then I can go ahead and I can put text. Text goes here. So, and I can, you know, use your word processing skills to start putting things in. I can actually put video, a YouTube video into my flyer. I can put pictures. I can put links. I can do anything that, that I want to do to enhance this, this, this flyer that I'm putting together. All right? So I build a flyer. Just like, just think about it. It's all drag and drops, pretty, pretty straightforward. So I've built this flyer. All right? Now, in the interest of time, let me kind of share with you um, what a, let's come back here to my flyers. Let me just come over here and show you one that uh, uh, learn about our national parks. So I'm going to click on this. And uh, this is one I put together where I put a sound in. And a uh, sound was recorded, so you can put sound in your flyers if you want to. Welcome to my lesson on Glacier National Park. Uh, so I was doing this. I put some pictures in. I put a YouTube video in. I put all, you know, just kind of playing with that a little bit. You, you follow me? Now watch. Now I'm going to come over here and see every flyer has a link associated with it because it's all on the Internet. So now you've built a flyer, and I want to distribute that to my department. I want to distribute it to my department. So now I come over here, and I take this link that's associated with it. See, it says link. I copy that. In the old days, you had no way of getting to those people. What are you going to do, try to send them a link in an email? Oh, you could. But wouldn't it be better to do this? Come over here, and now let me launch right here, remind. 101, and let me sign in, and let me come down to my uh, class Pasadena that I have, and this time I'm going to paste in that URL to that flyer that I just built, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send that out, which I just did. If you signed up for my text messaging service, you're now going to get a text message with a link in it. So now you take out your phone and you go, what's this? It's coming from Kuglin. You click on it, and this company specializes in taking their flyers 
and, and formatting them as such that they look good on a smartphone or, or wherever. Do you, you see what I'm saying? It looks really nice. You've just sent them a flyer for the upcoming event that has a YouTube video in it, a sound, links, or anything else that you want. And you've done nothing except build it, put the link in, and send it out to the department. Oh, you didn't get it? Are you signed up for my text messaging service? See how you're increasing your efficiency and your effectiveness? You're actually modeling for them if you, really, if you really find a way to use this. So now you've got your text messaging service. See, and I see people are downloading it. And that's good. You hear it on their phone? They're playing that. And I'm sending it out to them. So some more, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of skimming across the top. I'm kind of introducing these. That's all I can really do in the time that I have you. But I, I want to share with you with those things. OK, any questions? Because I'll pause for a second. Yes, yes. No, it goes to the whole group. That's a good question. You can't do individuals on this. There's other services that do that, but then it comes much more involved. When you do that, then you have to have different, uh, like, same phone numbers and stuff. So uh, I've asked them about that, and they said, no, they only plan to keep it this way, simply because they want to maintain the integrity of them not being able to come back to you and you being able to go to them. So, Could the not for the text messaging, OK? Yeah, that's good. That's, um, but, yeah. <laughs> OK, let's continue to push on. I, I want to share with you a couple of others, because I know that, uh, uh, so I get, again, I have all of these on this page for you right now. I showed you where to go so that you have all of these things uh, for you. And we'll do some other pieces here. So I'm sending things to you and, and, and so forth. Now, I know that one of the things that, that, that you need to do is to, um, let me just do this. I still go to places where they have sign-up sheets and so forth. And they use those sign-up sheets for attendance and those kinds of things. And it's a good method and so forth. Or maybe you need to get some information. I, Geez, I'm, I've got to go out and I've got to poll the staff on what they think about this or that. Or I'm supposed to collect information. Is that part of the work that you do, collecting maybe information and doing things, those kinds of things? Well, let me show you how to do something that is free and very easy to use. If you have a Google account, which I'm probably pretty sure many of you do, if you don't, I highly encourage you to go out and get a Gmail account, get a Google account, because that opens up the whole Google suite uh, to you. And when you open up the Google suite of tools, it is fabulous. And again, we're looking at increasing your efficiency and your effectiveness. We're looking at changing those stairs that you're going up and down. So watch kind of what I do here now, OK? These are different kinds of things that you can do. And so I'm going to share with you how I'm going to create an online form for staff, teachers, whomever, to fill out and get information from, OK? And, and so what I'm going to do is come over here and then watch. Uh, when you log in to Google, you're going to come up to Google Drive, which has a word processor and a number of different things. It says there's a little button over here called Create. So again, I want to come back to my OODA loop. And I want to say, everybody can observe today. If I'm coming at you too fast with things, remember I'm j you're just observing. You do not have to do every one of these. Because before too long, what I'm going to start seeing is the deer in the headlights. And I know. And what I'm trying to say is, you know what happens when I start seeing the deer in the headlights? You're turning the knob, well, in some cases, full, to where then, the ob if you turn it too far full, it turns off. Does that make sense? So if you're feeling like, whoa, this is too, dial the knob back. Remember, everybody can observe. Everybody can observe without feeling any stress, pressure, or anything. Everybody can observe. You're here today to professionally just learn kind of what's, what's available. If you want to turn the knob up a little bit, OK, gee, I like that remind. I might do that. I just don't, I don't know if I have time to do all this other stuff. Uh, but that's OK. But you control the knob, not me. So think about it in your mind as being a knob. Turn it on, turn it off. Remember, if you turn it too far, it goes off. 
So let me just share with you, observe what I'm going to do to collect information. I come over here and I'm going to create, and I'm going to create a form. I create a form. I pick a pretty form that I want. I can come down here and just pick any one that I want. I'll take header here, uh, and I'll call this, uh, I'll call this form, uh, I'll just do shorter P, C, C, demo. And I come over here, and I, I, I'll say, OK, I created that form. Now I'm going to come here, and I'm going to start putting questions in. Here's my question right here. Um, what is your name? So I, I put this in here. I get rid of this piece out here. And what is, is it a multiple choice? Or here's the question types that you have. What question type would be best to say, what is your name? And probably it would be just a text box, right? Text box would work fine. Text box. And uh, this looks good. What is your name? I'm giving you a text box to answer it. I'll say, done. Now I've created a form called PCC Demo. And the first question is, on that form is, what is your name? Now, let's say that I want to create another question. It says, add another item. This is the kind, these are the kinds of items based on the kind of information that you need to collect from the staff or department or whatever it is that you're responsible for. You can start picking different kinds of, 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 of uh, questions. You could put a video in if you wanted to. You could put in a... Uh, a, a scale of 1 to 10. You could do multiple choice. Check boxes. You could do whatever it is that you'd like. So I'm going to come over here and say, I want a multiple choice question. What is your favorite color? And then come down here and say blue. Come down here and say red. And don't forget to take the text out here. And let's come down here and say other. Give them a choice of three. Then you say done. Oh, this is a required question. In other words, I need to get this information from you. OK, the dean wants this information or whoever. I need to get this from you. This is not an optional one. So you would check that, and then people would have to, would have to fill that in. And then you just say required, required, and say done. Now, here's what your form looks like live. When it's all done, that's what it looks like live. Now, just two questions, but you get the idea, right? So I can put lots of stuff in that form. And then guess what I would probably want to do with that form? If I come back, if I come back to this screen right here, and I say send this form, do you see this link that says right here? Here's the link to the form. What have you learned so far as to, I need to get this form out to the department. I need to get it out there now. What would I do with that? I'd put that link in the Remind 101 and send it out to the department. They get it on their phones. They answer that right on their phone. And they, and they said, enter. And it comes back to you. Question. How does it come back to me? Yeah, here. OK. So I say done. Now, when this is done with your form, it says, how do you want this? How do you want the answers to be collected? You want them collected in a spreadsheet. So now it comes back to you in the form of a spreadsheet called PCC Demo. Right here, a new spreadsheet. Create this. Now, when the responses start coming back, when the responses start coming back, you're going to have all of those responses right here in a, in a spreadsheet that looks like this right here. When you open it up, let me see if I can do this one here. This is one that I did earlier. I'm, I'm going to try to show you what the responses look like when they come, when they come back. Let me come back here. Let me see if I have a form, form responses. Let me take a, a different form that I have. Uh, uh, let's see. I wanted to share with you. You'll get a spreadsheet. Now, I don't have anybody in this one. But every question that you have comes back in the form of a spreadsheet, and they're all listed there.
All the responses are listed by name, if you haven't put their name in and everything else. And then you can also look at those responses and have them graphed out. Did you know that 25% of the department answered blue? And so you have it all graphed. So again, uh, I don't want to belabor anything too long, because in an address like this, you want to keep things moving forward. But I wanted to share with you building forms. All right. Now, I'm going to close some of these windows down here. And uh, oh my goodness, it's almost time flies when you're having fun. I got to show you the last one here so I can get this money out. My, I'm having so much fun, I didn't see that. OK, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. And we're going to do this last one here. I'm going to ask you now to take out your tablet, if you have one, your smartphone, your computer. It doesn't make any difference. In order to play the game, you got to have one of those three. Or maybe you can team up if you don't have something. And I'm going to ask you to, if you have a smartphone, I'm going to ask you to go to the App Store. Go to your app store and download an app called Socrative. It's S-O-C-R-A-T-I-V-E, -E, Socrative. And you're going to look for the student. You'll get two of them on there. One will say student, one will say teacher. So go to the app store and get an app called Socrative. If you're on a tablet, you can get the app, or you can go to the website. If you have a computer, you can go to Socrative.com. All right, so watch what we're going to do now. So again, let me give you the directions again. If you have a smartphone, you can go out and download the app, Socrative Student. If you have a tablet, you can go get the app, or you can just navigate to the website, because you get to do both if you have a tablet. If you have a computer, I'd like you to go to Socrative.com. All right? What's up for grabs now? You want to team up? You certainly can do that. We've got the money, all right? So now when you get out here and you install the app, this is what it's going to look like. You click on student login, or you launch the app. You know you got it right on your smart device if you got this screen up. So when you download the student app and you launch it, it's going to look like this. Or you go to the website and you log in as a student, it's going to look like this. If you're on a tablet, it's going to look like this. Everybody kind of, those people that can do this, all right? All right, you're going to get this. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to turn your device into a clicker system where you're going to be able to feed information. I can feed information to you and I can get results back. See, I got to have, I got to have a system to come up because we're going to have a contest here and I need to see the first person who gets the contest wins the $10, see? So I've got to have a system of coming back and forth between you and me. So I'm going to set that up. Here we go. Socrative. When you come here, I'm going to leave this because I have to come back in and come back in as the, as the lead. So you, when you get right here, it says room number. You know you're in the right place. All right? So I'm going to come back in here now. And I'm going to go ahead and log in as the teacher. And I'll log in. And uh, now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. When you're back at the student version, right here, let me come back here. I'll just show you where to go again. So creative. When you come back to the student login page right here, the room number that I'd like you to put in there is 90909. It's just 90909. In other words, you've got to come to my specific room. 90909. Now you're in my room. If you sign up for Socrative for free, just because you, if you have a use for it, you'll get your own room number, and you can customize that room number. All right? But it has to be unique. You can't use 90210 you know, or anything like that. You know? So you, you, you're in 90909, and then it says probably waiting. It, says, it probably tells you waiting for a response. Perfect. Now, I'm going to minimize this. And I'm going to go ahead and start this up, because here's what we're going to do. And uh, here's the little thing we're going to play. A while ago, in fact, it was up in Tahoe, I, I 
did a, I did a conference with this gentleman here, and we were two of their speakers. John, great guy, he's a molecular biologist by trade. Got that. And, uh, but he wrote the book called Brain Rules. And so he had the audience first, and then I had the audience. And what he did with his audience is, is he tested them to see what side of the brain they were, that they, were, they were dominant on. And he used this activity. He said, OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the lyrics from three top songs. You would, you would, you would hear, if you heard the songs, you know that they're number one hits. But you couldn't hear any of the music. He would just read the lyrics. And then you had to identify it. So he said, how many people? Would, would do that, or of course half the audience then, half the audience raised their hand, the other half were sitting there going, like me, I was sitting there going, I need to hear the music. Then I could tell you what the, what the song was. Because my wife gets mad at me all the time. She says, John, why do you like that song? You don't even know the words. <laughs> you ever run into that? But I just like the song. Don't hold that against me, okay? So I thought, okay, I'm gonna have my audience see if they're gonna use the other half of their brain so what the contest is, is I'm going to play the jingles from three very popular television shows, one at a time. And you're going to have to text back to me the name of that show. And the first one that gets it right, the first one that gets it right on the list wins $10. OK? Still logging in? I'll give you a minute. Now, I'm going to send you a response, but now here's the deal, and I've run into this before. I'm going to send you the ability to send something back to me, and the first thing you're going to do is type your name in, but you're not going to press enter. You're not going to send it to me yet, because the entry has to have your name on it and the name of the show. If you send it to me early with just your name, it doesn't count. You see what I'm saying? So one time I was going to be generous with a group, and I said, OK, got it. And so right away, five people sent me their names. I said, OK, well, let's just let them, let them come back in. I'll erase it. No, no, if they can't follow directions, they can't play. <laughs> so I've learned my lesson. You send your name in, you're out the first one, not the, not the second. So I'm going to send you something. Right now, it's probably still saying waiting for. OK, now I'm going to send you a, an empty box to your phone. And then what I'm going to ask you to do, in fact, here it comes right now. And uh, it's going to come. What I want you to do is to put in your, uh, now, you're going to get a, a box that's going to come to you. And you just type it in. But don't hit enter yet. Just put your name in, because I'm just giving you a head start. If you had a long name, you'd be at a disadvantage. Don't, don't enter anything other than your name, but don't send it to me yet. OK? Just so we can tell who you are. Now, the rule is you've got to have the name of the sound down. So you do have to have the name of the sound. No, no abbreviations. I, you know, I put A down, and that's supposed to stand for, for Ackerman. Well, that's not, you know, uh, that doesn't quite work. So it has to be almost complete. All right, now, in the interest of time, we've got to move on this. So I'm sorry if you're not, not able to log in. Let's do the first one. And here we go. You're ready to put in. This is the first, this is the first sound for $10. What show is this? I got it. Type and send it in. OK, that was the sound. I'm going to tell you what the answer is. And then we'll see on the list who was the, the way the list works is the first one in is on the bottom. So I read the bottom up to see who won the 10 bucks. The show was, of course, and everybody knows, not really, Magnum PI. <laughs> Magnum PI. And the winter winner went to uh, JoLynn, Magnum PI. Come on down. Did I read that right? Ma Who's JoLynn? Come on down. Here you go.
that, that poster of Magnum P.I. in her bedroom paid off all these years. <laughs> OK. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to end that activity. And uh, here we go. I'm going to send out a short answer again to you again to put your name in. Uh, Right now, I'll send that out to you. Here's number two coming up. I'll give you a minute to get your name typed in. I'll give you a minute. See how this works? And by the way, what you should be doing, just having fun seeing how we're using our mobile devices, I can collect all kinds of information from you. I could be sending you questions. And in the instructional world, I can deliver assessments to students this way, quick formative assessments and have questions and so forth. So all right, here's another $10. Here's $10. Here we go. That was an easy one. This one's pretty easy, I think. Well, who is, what show is this one? You will, you will know this one, I think. What is that one? Okay, a little harder, a little harder. Maybe a slight advantage to, uh, to the man. Remember this one, got to be right. This one is called Home Improvement. <laughs> not tool time, not tool time, Home Improvement. All right, who was our, win who was our winner? Let's come down to... Uh, Fresh home improvement, it comes down to Kendra. Where's Kendra? Come on down. Kendra is buying lunch today, she said. No. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay, I'm a little, I'm running over a little bit, so end act here. Here's the last one. And uh, short answer. Now, you got to be quick on this one. You got to be quick, OK? Because I think a lot of you, well, I don't know. I don't know. I shouldn't say that. But you got to be quick on this one. Everybody ready? Here's the last one. You got to be quick. This table. <laughs> that was hard. That was hard. I'll give it a second. And the winner there is Breaking Bad. <laughs> and that goes to Angie. Breaking Bad. Come on down. Okay, you got it. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, yeah, you do. All right. Uh, I want to uh, thank you. I've got everything online for you. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Have a great day. It was great to be here. We'll play off with Magnum PI. Thank you. Oh, you have to want to say something? Oh, sorry. Okay, so a big round of applause for John Kuglin. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Please let us know if you need help finding rooms for your next event. We'll see you back here at noon for lunch. <laughs>